If you've ever found yourself wanting to take an action on a message in Teams, but the only thing you could do was try to copy it from Teams and maybe put it into another system or an email, this video is gonna talk about how you could do, automate that using Power Automate. Hi, my name is Matt Dressel, and today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the More Actions feature within Teams which you may or may not have noticed is available on every single message within Teams. So chats, channels, everything uh, within Teams. That feature really is a powerful extension so you can take actions on messages within Teams. And today we're gonna show you how to do that. So to give you an example of this, uh, imagine I just got this message in saying that uh, I can't, the user can't add somebody to their CRM environment, they're getting an error, and I wanna make that into an issue that I might assign to someone else or be able to track that. If you hover over the message in question and you click on the ellipsis, you'll see there's a bunch of you know, standard Teams actions and then there's also this more actions. And even in the more actions, you'll see some standard stuff that's been added by other apps. So you'll see um, you know, if I wanted to create a poll or if I wanted to create a work item within uh, Azure DevOps, I could do that. But if I want to do something custom, something that I built with some, my own workflow to go into maybe a SharePoint list, which is what this does, I can have create my own uh, flow, which if I click on this create issue, it'll ask me for uh, some comments. So if I want to give some additional detail, um, so in this case, I'm going to add that the error was user does not exist, and I'm gonna submit it. So then what this is gonna do behind the scenes is it could do pretty much anything I want it to do. What I have built this to do is if I go into my SharePoint list, I now have this new item that just got brought in with the text of the message, and then also the comment that I entered as the user. And of course, this is a very simplistic example. Um, you know, I don't have a, a sign to or any, anything else in the SharePoint list. Obviously, you could add those. So that's an example of what this does. Now I want to get into how to do that. So I'm going to actually go into a different environment, one that doesn't have any of this set up. And the first thing you want to do is go into Power Automate. Within Power Automate, you want to create a new flow. And it'll be a new instant cloud flow. And we'll, we'll name it. Um, so whatever you name the flow is what it's going to show up in uh, Teams. So you're going to want to name it something like create issue. Um, and then in your trigger, you want it to be triggered for a selected message. This is kind of the key thing. If you Any flow that you have access to that is for a selected message will automatically show up in that actions list, which I'll show you in a little bit. So I'm going to create this. Now, once I create it, um, basically, if I left it like this, it wouldn't ask the user to give to do anything. Um, if I want it to ask the user for additional stuff, I have to click Create Adaptive Card, because this actually uses the Adaptive Card functionality within Teams to ask the user about the information they, that you want to get. So in this case, you, it brings up the Adaptive Card Editor. This editor has a lot of different features. We're not going to worry about it too much. The only thing we're really going to do at this point is Make sure we're going to make it a comment. Um, we're going to delete some of these other ones like that. We're going to change the text at the top. So please add comments. And I'm going to put a little bit more detail here. And I'm going to change uh, the ID. So the ID is going to be what you're going to use later on in the flow. So I'm going to make this comment, and I'll make the placeholder. And I'm going to change this to be multi-line. So at this point, I should be able to save the card. And I will add a new step. Uh, and actually, before I get too far along, uh, this is the team I'm going to be wanting to use this from. So I'm going to go here and open up SharePoint. So uh, what I have here is I don't exactly have the list created yet. So I'm going to go to the site contents of this. And I'm going to create a new list. Uh, and I'm just going to do the issue tracker, kind of the standard template. And I think I like how this works already, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to come back in here. 
and I'm going to do um, in SharePoint, I'm going to create an item. And we'll use my new list from executive. Yep, the executive site. And the list name is issue tracker. This is going to give me all the things that I need to, um, to add all the fields. And I'm going to be able to add a couple things directly from what I've gathered from the user. So when I select title, it's giving, it gives me lots of different options here. I'm going to choose message content. So that's going to be from the selected message. Um, the description, I'm going to make the comments. So my comment. Um, and I'll set the, maybe I'll set the, le the rest of these to be kind of uh, the default values. I'll leave those alone. So let me save this. So now, if I come here, here I have a message that is uh, that I might want to use to create an issue. If I come in and go to the more actions, you can see I have my create issue flow now. I can create on click this. It will come up and ask me for my comments. So. And I'll submit it. And then in my issue tracker here, you can see I've brought in, uh, automatically brought in these details. A couple things you need to be aware of. Number one, when you do this, uh, like I was saying before, any flow that you have access to that uses the trigger for selected message is going to show up in all of your on all messages in Teams. So a chat, you know, any message in Teams, you can click it and do something for it. Um, so it's not specific to a particular team or a particular group. In addition, when I you know you'll notice I mentioned access. Right now, this flow is only accessible to me. If I add other run-only users, so if I click Edit here, and I add some additional people, so. We'll add Mike, um, and uh, so I can add Mike. Um, and I can also say I want to use this particular connection to run it. So I can choose the one provided by the run-all user. So that would be Mike if he was running it. It would be run under the context of him, uh, or I could click here and make it be my connection, the connection that I used, or it could be a service account as an example. Um, but now that I've done that, if I logged in as Mike, he would also have that option within Teams to do that for any message. Obviously, what I've done here is very, very basic, um, but you sh should be able to see the concept and what you can do with it. There's a lot of powerful integrations that you can create so that you can take action on something that you've maybe been chatting about for a period of time and want to turn into something or integrate with another system. To give you guys a, maybe a more realistic example that you might be able to, be, to think about, uh, if you look at all the content that we produce, we're producing content on a regular basis. That all comes from a lot of chat messages. So if somebody comes up with an idea, they'll just post in a, in a channel about what they, what they think would be a cool piece of content. But then we need to get it into a process to review it and talk about it and who's going to do it. This is something that easily could be used for that to go and execute a message that would go start workflow that would go um, put it into uh, a list or maybe a planner board or something else that could start that process off for us. So that's just one example of some, a real world example of how this could be used. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the flows that will show up in Teams are based on your access, but not only your access, but only flows that exist within the default environment. If you're not familiar with what the default environment is, we do have another video that talks about environments and talks about the difference between them. Most people won't have to worry about it too much because they'll only have one environment up here that, that'll be the only one they're able to see. Um, but do be aware that it only looks at the default environment and the flows that exist in the default environment that have this trigger. Hopefully this video has helped you understand how you might be able to use the more actions feature of Teams. Obviously it's very generic. It allows you to do many things and kind of anything you could do with Power Automate, you can trigger from a message within Teams. If this video has been useful to you, we produce more content just like this all the time. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and you can get updated every time there's a new video from us. If you weren't aware, we also have a learning center on our website where we try to curate a lot of this content and include 
blog articles that we may not have made into videos. Be sure to check it out to see all the content we're producing. We're also producing a podcast regularly where Mike, myself, and the rest of the team talk about Office 365, Microsoft technology, and all things modern workplace. Lastly, I want you to know that we've also started doing open office hours through uh, a Teams meeting and also live on YouTube. This is a really me good medium for us to be able to answer questions in person in real time from people who might have asked something on YouTube, but the response would take much uh, more than we can do in just a YouTube response. We'll leave a link to all these things in the description below. Feel free to check it out. Thanks for checking out my video and I'll catch you next time.